still isn't working. Woohoo! Every but oh, there we go. A little bit of audio for you, my treat. So if I do that and do that and do that and do that. Oh, that sounds promising. Samsung 2. Yes. Hello. We are live. Uh, sorry, Colin will cut that out, I'm sure. It's Colin. He's babe. Not here yet. Hello, and welcome to episode 240. 240. What time do you go to the dead? Oh, 230. Uh, it's episode 240 of Heroes of Handheld, the internet's... s 2 ds ios android virtual boy um the others as well my name's chris i would normally be joined by young master colin Byrne. however colin is running late and so i have started without him um and then he will seamlessly blend his way in later on not unlike when you have a like it's got like a swirl of something in it and you take a couple of bites and you're like where's the swirl i was promised and the swell hits you and it's good so um keep waiting for the swell anyway thank you very much for uh tuning in last week when i wasn't here but colin filled the fort for me thank you for your good vibes um the thing i had to do was good and i will be able to talk more about it maybe in the new year um we'll see we'll see we'll see but uh yes so i'm back Thank you for everyone who's, who was wondering why I am fine. It's all good. Now, last week, Colin was running down the results from the Game Awards. And as well as that, we were talking about Question Racing, which we're going to be talking about a little bit more later on, and Super Smash Brothers for Nintendo Switch. Super Smash Brothers Ultimate, as it's called nowadays. And Colin, last week on the episode, was like, well, I want to see what Chris thinks of it because that is going to directly affect my decision on whether to purchase it or not. And Colin, you want to know what I think of it? Here you go, son. So, I have been playing Super Smash Bros. Ultimate for Nintendo Switch. Came out almost two weeks ago. I've played it probably at least once a day since, uh, since release in a variety of forms. I've been playing a lot of the online mode. I've been playing a fair bit of World of Light, although I'm led to believe that actually I've not really made a dent into World of Light. And I have been playing normal Smash mode as well, both with CPUs and multiplayer. And for me, the game is very good. I'm enjoying it a lot. Um, I think it's really good fun. Um, and I think they've done really well to take what was great about the Wii U and the 3DS versions and merge it with the previous features we've seen in Melee and like they've made it feel a bit more Melee-like in terms of movement and it does feel as well significantly different to play like the way the characters interact with each other excuse me, the way the characters interact with each other uh, sorry for yawning, my bad we got an iTunes review years ago that said I yawn too much but if Colin will be late on a Wednesday Eve then who's to blame? Not Chrissy! Um, I think they've done really well to change the, tweak the engine, and it does feel significantly different to play it, and certain moves feel like they take longer. They've done a good job of um, going through and kind of uh, tweaking fighters. I, I really like that they're at a point where they've said that, you know, we have the fighters. We don't necessarily, we're not, there's no, you know, it is, it is balanced to a point. But there's no way of making a 75 character strong game where every character is the same. So I really like that they've gone in and done little tweaks, but they've not changed the feel of some of the characters, especially the ones that have come across from like Brawl or from um, Melee or any of the older games. So I really enjoy it. I've been playing a lot. Uh, I like. I think the online's really good. I've seen a lot of people complaining about the online, and there are certain usability issues with it. I think the way they do the arena mode is not uh, is not as good as it could be. Um, and the way that it works when you actually find someone you like playing with and the rematch tool is not as... And the rematch tool, excuse me, Colin would normally follow. 
the rematch tool is not as strong as you might um, expect. And I think it's what what they've done the classic thing, which is what they do in the Wii U version, which is they've got an engine and a mode which works really, really, really well. And then they've dressed it up with things that are mostly good. So I, I think the online for me is pretty strong. Uh, I don't have too many issues with lag. And when you do, you can just leave at the end of the game. Um, I think there are issues with how customized you can make your game. For example, uh, when you rematch, you have to serve the same fighters. If you want to set up an arena and change the rules, you are not able to without exiting an arena or making a new one, which is silly. Um, yeah, there are certain just like quality of life things that I think they could have done a little bit of tweaking on. But on the most part, it's a really complete package and a really good game. And I'm really enjoying it. I like the new characters. World of Light feels overwhelmingly big but it does feel like a nice alternative to just playing Smash against CPUs. If you've not got anyone with you in the room, I think it's a good mode to have, and it does feel like it's going to go on for a long time. Um, and it's nice being able to shake it up and do that and then do a bit of classic mode and a bit of online or whatever. I think as a game, I really like it, and I really recommend it, and no doubt people who are interested in it will be playing it anyway. What I will say is it definitely makes me wish that I lived nearer people who were into the game because i mean obviously there are probably people near me who play but you know what i mean like friends who are nearby just because i really miss like the local wireless you know local m1 sit around tv play and you can kind of simulate it with online and then you've got the voice chat which i've used a bit but it's not quite the same so um Yeah, and the sound design is really, really good. And I think that's a really um, unspoken, unsung element of it. But the different songs are incredible. And the way that they really managed to make each level and each fighter feel like they're being ripped out of their own franchise is really cool. Um, so, yeah, on the whole, I'm really enjoying Smash and I would really recommend it. I think um, the announcement of the first bit DLC last week at the Game Awards were, or was it week before last? Time flies. The uh, Joker announcement was really interesting. I think it could spell the way for even more weird characters. I wouldn't be surprised if, like, maybe Okami or maybe someone from Resident Evil. But, you know, who can tell? I mean, it could be anyone. Maybe Banjo, but I don't want to say it out loud because it's out loud. is the fastest selling Nintendo home console game in Europe ever. Fastest selling, fastest selling Nintendo portable game is. Because it could be something like Pokemon, could be something like Smash or Mario Kart. Um, I should have done my research beforehand. And there is not an obvious answer on Google. Uh, but yeah, this is the fastest selling home console game. And obviously, that's a really big deal. Um, and I think it's really interesting that this feels like. <sighs> now, don't get me wrong, this is going to make me sound like a prick. But I feel like this is the first Smash game that has really, truly broken into the mainstream. Because obviously, Smash is popular. But like, I, ha I had the 3DS one, I played that thing to shit. And I will tell you, that did not have as many people playing it and as much goodwill as this game does and has about it. And what I think is really interesting about the release of this game is they're doing a really good job in keeping people informed. You know, the first patches have already started to come out. They're kind of keeping people going on, like, the, um, uh, you know, oh, there's going to be different spirits up for grabs and stuff. Spirits is a whole... It's a whole thing. I don't know how into spirits I am, but I'll talk about that more as I play more of the game. But, yeah, overall... I'm really impressed with the quality of the game and the fact it's sold so well is, I think, a really good sign. And to be honest, I think we'll get the five pieces of uh, DLC and then I really wouldn't be surprised if we get another five later on um, and they keep doing it because this could this could be the type of thing that they can milk for life. You know, they can really keep it coming. Um, speaking of Nintendo, breaking news because I've just turned on my Pokemon Go because I wanted to see if Colin was online to have a mock battle. Might, might do that later on. 
And I've just seen they've announced the first uh, community day of 2018 is going to be Totodial. Uh, and it will be January the 2nd, uh, sorry, January the 12th from uh, 1 a.m. to 1 p.m. in Europe. That's, oh no, 10 a.m. to 1 p.m., so 23 hours. Uh, more Totodile, get, Croco uh, get Croconore with the special move and more effective incubators as well. Speaking of Pokemon Go and uh, Community Day and stuff, I would be very interested in how people are finding the new fighting mechanic. Uh, you can tweet us at Handheld Podcast about that. I'm quite into it. I've kind of messed about a bit of it, and it's much more tactical than I thought it would be, particularly the use of super shields to block and also the special moves, which are really um, feel like a lot more of like a game of bluff than they were before. And, you know, like you, you get, for those of you who haven't played it, uh previously fighting on pokemon go is basically tap the screen tap the screen tap the screen then when you have enough when you've done enough tapping you try to have a special and you can shoot your special off and obviously they have different levels of effectiveness uh this new mode is very interesting because the you can charge up special moves but also you have a shield which you can deploy when the enemy is using a special so suddenly you have a bit of a cat and mouse thing because should you save your shields um, for more devastating attacks or should you use them early on to gain like a quick advantage? I'm enjoying it. I think it's a good old mode and I'm having a good old time. Um, there's also been on Pokemon Go this uh, month, this week even, the launch of the new uh, December event, which will feature new ice Pokemon uh, appearings um, such as Snowva, the snow tree thing. Um, and it looks like we're going to be getting Krogunk as well and Munchlax. These are all in the picture. Um, and lots of more things like that, as well as double candy, double stardust. Uh, and it runs through um, from December 18th to 22nd is double candy. Then 26th to 26th is double stardust. And 26th to 30th is double XP. And then 30th to the second is incubated twice as effective. So lots of different things going on, as well as the increase of deli birds in the wild. Um, yeah, I'm like, I, d I don't know how much of this stuff that is in the picture is going to be in the game. So I've only had a little bit of a chance to play with it, but hopefully a lot because I really like Krogunk and I would very much like him to be in the game very soon because that is a Pokemon I personally adore. If you're playing Pokemon Go and you want to give us some feedback on how you're enjoying the new modes, uh, you can tweet us at Handheld Podcast. You can write to us here as Handheld at gmail.com. You can find us on Facebook by searching for Heroes of Handheld. And if you look on YouTube, you can search Heroes of Handheld and just write us a comment as well where you'd put a comment on the normal YouTube video. Um, away from Pokemon, but sticking with Nintendo, uh, Nintendo of America earlier tweeted today uh, they wanted to thank fans and, you know, I think that's very good of them because they want to thank fans for making Nintendo Switch the fastest selling video game system of this hardware generation. Um, it's quite hard to find news about this, um, but there is basically lots of sales for Nintendo Switch, who'd have thought, uh, compared to, and it's to do with, if you look at how many have sold in how many months it's been compared to the other game, the other consoles of this um uh generation so your playstations and your xboxes um big news from them well done to nintendo uh smash bros is fast selling game in the series as well and for the system to date so people are loving smash bros and they're loving switch and nintendo have been speaking a lot about their holiday plans and hoping to get to this uh, magical 20 million figure by the end of the financial year and suddenly it feels a little bit more possible just because the um you know clearly it's selling very very well and the smash is mate is a system seller and some people were worried about whether Smash would be a system seller or not. Um, but it's clearly, you know, it's doing a business for them. And Black Friday and obviously there's, you know, good stuff to come next year with Animal Crossing and things. So it's really nice that people are jumping on at this point and really getting into it. Uh, so well done to Nintendo. Fair enough to them for, you know, pushing it and sticking with the system and keeping the content coming. Um, and I really hope that they have as successful a 2019 as they have a 2018. Uh, I am in a predicament because Colin is still running late, but I'm just going to keep. I'm just going to keep bloody going. I'm just going. I'm just going to keep doing it. I'm a madman. You can't stop me from podcasting. They've always tried to pin me down. They've always tried to stop me from podcasting, but they'll never hold me back. Um, I would love to know what people are asking for Nintendo-wise for Christmas. A lot of my friends are 
uh, have already bought Smash, but are asking for Diablo, which I've talked about a little bit on this podcast, but I am still enjoying. Um, it's complicated, but it's very satisfying, and it's I like the level of mindlessness. I've not been brave enough to play online with strangers yet, but I will uh, maybe over the Christmas period when I've got a couple of free afternoons, I will have to give that a go and find some people to play with. So if you want to play Diablo, uh, let me know. I'd be well up for that. Let's move on to the next piece of news. Now, Stardew Valley, I can't believe people start to talk about this game again because I played it a lot this time last year um, and I really enjoyed what I played and I thought it was really cute and really charming and it's lovely. If you've not played it, this is uh, Stardew Valley is a top-down um, 2D farming sim, but it's, much, it's more of like a social game because there's lots of characters in the town all of which have their own social lives and stories and likes and interests. And you play, um, and basically every, I think it's something like every half an hour is an in-game day. So you rattle through them, really, maybe it's every hour is an in-game day, but you haven't played it in a while. But you rattle through the days and you're trying to make money, you're trying to dis, uh, I don't know, artifacts and museum, you're trying to um, be efficient with your crops. Your type game. Um, but there's a very strange, weird story going on in it with the different side characters and stuff. Um, so it's a, it's a game I really enjoyed. And Chucklefish um, have announced that um, the developer, Concern 8, has managed to make the multiplayer update and the single player content update live. It's on Nintendo Switch now. I haven't downloaded it um, yet, uh, but I will be playing. Uh, I'm going to try and give it a go over the weekend with some pals. And it's a free update. I can't, oh, I can't wait to play it. I can't wait to play this online. I can't wait to see what it's like to get into some friends. We want to watch way, and everyone has a very different set of priorities. And like I personally, for me, when I play these sorts of games, my interests mainly come down to trying to run the farms and the things around the farms as efficiently as possible. And what I'm really focusing on with these games is making the you know, sprinklers and the crops work to the best of their advantage, making the system and making money in the most efficient way. Whereas some people will and I'll just for playing online with people because I think that'd be a really interesting experience. I can't wait. I really can't wait. I'm so glad they've managed to push this through. So uh, watch this space. I'm really keen for that. Next up, uh, Gunman Clive. Now, if you've not played Gunman Clive before, I don't frankly know where you've been because this is one of the first games I remember downloading from the eShop on my 3DS and talking about on Heroes of Handheld because it was something like $1.99 or something. It was super duper cheap. And I remember picking up... Um, for 3DS because I was like, oh, I, I want to buy something, but I don't want to spend loads and loads of money. And it's a 2D platforming shooter um, with this incredible like, hand-drawn art style. Um, and it's really super fun. It's really um, tricky and challenging. And it's not, it's set as, you play as Gunman Clive, who's this kind of cowboy character. Um, and it starts from the Old West, but it quickly gets very weird. And then the second one, um, the first one's very pretty, but the second one is even more gorgeous because they change it away from the kind of sepia color tones and they make it a lot more um, colorful and they really go in for the hand-drawn art style and this sort of pencil look to it. And it came out on 3DS. There was also a HD collection on Wii U, which came out in 2015. And now Bertil Horberg, who is the uh, sole developer, has announced that on January 17th, so only a month away, uh, this game is going to be coming out to Switch in a HD collection, which will cost $3.99 or €3.99, so very, very cheap. And if you've not played this game before, this is the type of game that I really try and like to point people to because it's, 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 you know, it's a price range which is incredibly affordable for a lot of people. $3.99 is not a great deal of money to spend on the game, in my personal opinion, um, and it's really one of those ones that is worth every penny it's it the quality and the polish and the finish of it on the 3ds i've not played the switch version but i hope it's the same it's just so good and it's such an immensely satisfying from a gameplay point of view uh shooting platformer and whenever you die and whenever you lose it's one of those ones where it was 
always your fault. Like the game is hard, but also if you make a mistake, you really feel it. And it's not one of those ones that's like frustrating. It's hard, but it's not annoying. It's like, it's challenging. I think that's the way that you would phrase it. So uh, yeah, it's a game that I would really recommend picking up and on uh, if you've got 3DS or Wii U. And I can't wait to play it on the Nintendo Switch. <laughs> Sorry. Sorry, guys. It's the last day of the week here at Handheld House. I'm really fucking tired. Um, this, so when this comes out in January 17th, uh, I, I hope it's going to be good. And I'm going to get that as soon as it comes out. Uh, I really can't wait. Now, before we go on to the next news story, I'm going to try something wazzy. And I'm going to call up our dear friend Colin live on the podcast and see if he picks up. Because... I don't know whether to keep going without him. I don't know whether to finish without him. Like I don't know what I don't really know what the ethics is. So the way to do it is to call Colin, put on speakerphone, and see what he says. Uh, let's just find out now. I hope you can hear something. Voicemail! Oh, he's put me onto voicemail. I'll be back to you as soon as I can. Thank you. Let's leave him a Christmas message. When you finish recording, please hang up or press the hash key for more options. Hi, Colin. This is Chris. You're live on here as fan held. Please don't swear. I'm trying to work out whether to finish the podcast or not without you. Um, and I think the answer is probably going to be I'm probably just going to go ahead and finish it because I, I, I'm good at filling, but only to a point. Um, so I hope you have a Merry Christmas. Uh, thanks. Thanks for coming. All best. Bye. Love you. Bye um let's go straight on and talk about the last piece of news which is uh, no there's two bits of news this is the penultimate piece of news and this is the news that minecraft is getting a nightmare before christmas update uh if you're still playing minecraft good for you this looks really really cool so it's different skins there's different blocks there's all sorts going on and well a better trailer on here is fanhill.wordpress.com because i'd really recommend excuse me, having a look at this, uh, especially if you're a Disney fan or a Nightmare Before Christmas fan. It looks really fun. It looks really interesting. And it's kind of nice um, with everything else going on in the world of uh, video games and, you know, Fortnite's kind of become the new big smash hit, obviously. Minecraft, I f always worry, like, oh, is it going to be left in the dirt? But obviously people are still playing it and loving it because you can see that they're, you know, still bringing content to it and still really getting into it. So it's really good to see um, that that is happening. And I hope that it's a uh, decent and interesting patch. Now, before we wrap up, uh, we've got one last piece of news, but Colin is just, I'm told he's just long on. So before Colin gets here, I want to take a quick uh, moment to say thank you, everyone who's been listening to the podcast this year. Um, we've had lots going on. It's been a real, to, for me personally, it's been a really fun year to be doing this because we've seen lots of news with Nintendo and lots of things uh, going on in the world of handheld and lots of developments, especially with the Switch, but also in the world of mobile gaming. We've seen some really cool stuff come and go, especially things like, you know, watching Pokemon Go and how that's changed. And for me personally, that's become a really interesting kind of topic of our show. And we hope you like it as well. Um, as we kind of go into the new year, um, it would be great to kind of get some thoughts and feedbacks from you and how, what things you enjoy about the show, what things you don't enjoy about the show, what you think we should be changing and doing differently. Um, because, you know, New Year's time for reflection. And we would welcome that feedback. And the easiest way to do it is to, hear us, hear us, is to email us, heroesofhandheld at gmail.com. Um, and yeah, we'd, we'd really appreciate some feedback. And, you know, let us know what you want to see more of, what you want to see less of. If, there's, if you think we're not talking enough about something, you think we're talking too much about something, uh, we, re we don't necessarily react to everything, but we will 100% read everything that you send in. So do keep that feedback coming. And thank you know thank you for sitting with us this year because it's been... Oh, here he is. I was just... Uh, hello. Um, I was well, this, just telling you... This is a first. I'm actually talking to you from work at the moment. Are you? I thought yeah. you might be. Um, uh, Soul's about the delay. What have I missed? What's going on? Well, you're just in time to do the last news story. Oh, shit. <laughs> Uh, and I thought you would want to do this because, Colin... Great, okay. It's, it's about Crash Team Racing. Oh, God, lay it on me. Um, and the after you talked about it last week, and you, I listened to the podcast, and you were so excited, bless you, and I could tell you were just like... 
you were really, really buzzing about this new Crash Team Racing Nitro Fueled reveal trailer that was played at the Game Awards. No, I, say, I, was, have no idea. I have no idea where you're going with this. And the fact you're bigging it up so much makes me think you're about to cr crush me. So a Twitter user, Corotech, has discovered that if you go on the Activision website to pre-order Crash Team Racing, yeah. uh, originally you'd put in Nintendo Switch as your release day, um, and it would say, oh, yeah, great, we'll bring that out on June 21st. Bad news, Colin, because now you put in Nintendo Switch, and it says the game is simply coming soon. What? So this now might not release on the same day as it comes but to this, other platforms. So this could be a glitch, you know? What, what's to say that isn't just a glitch? I mean, it could Act be a glitch. Activision have never let us down before. When have they ever disappointed us of anything? I'm sure it's fine. It's fine. Yeah, <laughs> but, what could go wrong? Well, it, it's weird. I saw an article, I don't know if it was this week or last week, about they were talking to Nintendo about potentially, you know, Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, and they were saying how, like, if um, Rocksteady, is it Rocksteady? It, no, Rockstar, sorry, Rockstar. Yeah. Uh, be, because they've been developing it for so long, um, if they'd known more in advance about the Nintendo Switch, they could have potentially developed Red Dead Redemption 2 for the Nintendo Switch. So if it's saying on Activision's website that it's coming soon, that sort of confuses me a little bit because there's no reason why it should be, you know, released later than the other versions of the game unless there's an issue with, I don't know, timed exclusive or something. That's really weird. I don't know. Yeah, mate, possibly. I, you know, I, always, I, I worry so much because we've seen this weird trend of games coming to Switch, but later than they come to other platforms and then still being charged full price when they've dropped on everything else. Yeah. I, I, I just, I worry about it. I really worry about it. And I'm like, if you can't get this right, then oh, Activision. Well, I mean, it's... I mean, the Insane Trilogy wasn't full, a full price release, was it? It was about 30 quid, 25 Yeah, I, th I think it was 30. Yeah. So I think Crash Team Racing, I mean, I have seen reports in places that there's going to be obviously that um, uh, limited edition edition version is it limited edition it's like called the i don't know nitrix oxide version or something there's gonna be a more yeah. expensive version of it. um i mean i would hope um you know even if the switch one comes out the same time as the other releases that it would be around the 30 pound mark anyway i don't know they could probably charge like a full price um put a full price price tag on it and people would still buy it because people have been calling for this remaster for a very long time. It's what everyone's been... Ever since the Insane Trilogy was announced, like years ago, people have said, oh, when's Crash Team Racing getting remastered then? Um, I don't know. I, I, it's difficult because I have the nostalgia factor of Crash Team Racing. I played that religiously on my old PS1 back in the day. One of my favorite games of all time. I'd say I played that so much. I even played it so much that it got to a point where the disc wouldn't even work anymore. Like, really? Put, put it in my PS1 and it would freeze. There's a bit where like, you get past the first bit where it does the intro titles. It would say loading. Loading would come up on screen with like a checkered flag in the background. And it was always on the second loading screen. It would freeze. Always the same part. God, After, that's mad. I know every one time, every probably one in ten times it would freeze. So I'd have to go through the whole rigmarole of like loading it up, selecting new game, selecting it would just not work. So that shows how much I played it. Anyway, back to the point. I think this would be great. I hope that's wrong that it comes out on Switch at the same time because I think it'll be amazing on Switch. I love racing games anyway. I think it's going to be awesome. But yeah, that is a bit worrying. But I'm hoping it's just an error. Hopefully we'll get an update on that in the new year. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I imagine we'll probably, they'll probably cover it in a Nintendo Direct in the maybe, maybe not January, but maybe like March time. Hopefully, yeah. I, I can't wait because if me and you get it, we can like play Crash Team Racing online. What a world we live in, man. Have, so you, have you got Nintendo Online yet? No. <laughs> I've, I've not actually picked up my Switch in months. But Christmas is next week. I'm expecting a few Nintendo Switch games, so that will change. Holidays are coming. It's always Nintendo Switch. And I've got a red Joy-Con. Well, it's all about the red. Um, I think that's probably everything, Colin. Sorry to, to rush you on, but I wasn't sure when you were going to be here. What's going on at work? Tell us what's happening. Well, there's a show on tonight, basically. It's, uh, it's the festive period, so in the UK we have something called pantomime. And yeah, <laughs> just uh, 
thought maybe it's too late. All boring banking stuff and stuff like that. Well, I mean, it should have finished at like half seven, but there's various reasons. It's annoying. Basically, it all comes down to sickness. I'm the only manager in, and yeah, it's just bullshit. Basically, are, are you a man- are you a manager? Check you out. Yeah. I didn't know that. Yeah, well, I'm assistant manager. Oh, Who that's good. That? I didn't. Oh, congratulations on your new job. Uh, I hadn't talked about that on the podcast yet. Uh, didn't want to say it in public, uh, but thank you. Uh, time well, to sign good, off. Good luck on the potential thing. Oh, I don't know. Oh, geez. Luckily, no one listens to this podcast. So it's fine. It's fine. <sighs> fine. Um, um, I, feel, I want to do some more talking before we go. I, feel, I mean, just go here. Come on, man. Well, are you are you are you allowed to do more talking? Yeah, I'm just sort of stood in like a hallway. <laughs> yeah. Well, no, it's a staff area, so it's fine. Uh, can you? How do I sound? Do I sound all right? Honestly, not great. You you're you sound good quality wise, but you're cutting out quite a lot. Uh, well, at least you can hear bits of it. That's weird because I think the internet here is pretty strong. Oh well. Oh well, we'll just make do. Anyway, give me a give me a quick synopsis of the other news you've spoken about, and I'll give my brief take. On okay, it. Go on, so quick, 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 go on. Uh, we well, I reviewed Smash at the top, and then we talked about the Nintendo sales statistics that the Switch is the fastest selling console of this gen. Yeah, that's cool. And yeah, this nice. Smash is the fastest selling Smash title and home oh, console game. I've not gen. heard your thoughts on Smash. Please tell me. I know you already tell the. I want to know. I I can't in good faith go through it again. But what I will tell you, Colin, <laughs> is to listen to this week's Heroes of Handheld, where you can hear it in depth. Well, is it a good? I can actually see you on the video. So is it a thumbs up or a thumbs down? It's a thumbs. Two thumbs. Oh, but oh, for, oh. but for you, if you don't have online. I wouldn't rate it two thumbs up. I'd rate it one and a half. But I'd say you need to get online. That surprises me. I hear the campaign is really long, but really annoying as well. Yeah, it's not. It's very uh, bloated, I would say. Yeah. Um, so we also talked about Stardew Valley, the multiplayer patch being live. Um, we talked about Gunman Clive coming to Switch in January. Uh, the Minecraft um, Nightmare for Christmas collab. And Pokemon Go's winter event, which is live now. How are you, are you playing that? I am, yeah. There's loads of stuff going on. There's incubators at Pokestops, Double Candy, Deli Birds everywhere, the ice Pokemon. It's great. Good place at the moment. Um, how are you finding the fight, the battling? Have you done any of that? I've done one. Um, I actually really like it. I, I found it difficult to actually join games. I find the connectivity is a bit dodgy at times. Um, it also doesn't seem to notify people when you challenge them to a battle. I don't know whether you found this, but I'll challenge people who are like standing right next to me. They just won't come up, and so they have to like invite me. I don't know whether it's just my Pokemon Go, but it's weird. But when I've actually got into a battle, I really enjoyed it. I think they've changed it up just enough to make it a bit different to the whole gym battles, you know, with the shield and you know having to tap to use your strong um, attack. But I'm, I'm oh, really yeah, it. yeah, I think it's. It's, it's good that it's more tactical, isn't it? I like yeah. that. You definitely need to plan your use of a shield because um, if you use them too quick, you could be you know, in for a very short fight. Um, no, I'm, I'm digging it. We have to, we have to, we should battle at some point. Where, where mm, are your friends? Good, yeah, sure. we should. I was thinking that. I was going to do it live on the podcast, but uh, it's probably not very good to do it whilst you're using on your my phone. phone anyway. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's probably not best. Um, yeah. Ugh. Well, Orcs. We that was pretty much it to be honest. There wasn't loads of news, but we aren't here next week or the week after. Yeah, we're gonna have two weeks off our uh, winter solstice break, we're gonna call it. Um, so we'll be back firing off all cylinders in 2019. Firing off in all cylinders that, that doesn't sound right, but we'll be back 2019. So what is now the 20th, it's the 19th today. So next Wednesday is Boxing Day, the week after is the day after New Year's Day, or is it? New yeah, Year's that's day? right, the day after New Year's Day. Yeah. So we'll be back the week after that. So that should be the 9th of January, I'd imagine. Um, so it's three weeks. So we'll have two weeks off the show, but we'll be back in three weeks' time. Um, just a little bit annoyed that I didn't um, wasn't here for a proper podcast. But there you go. You fun. know what? That's all right. These things happen. And, you know, I'm sure maybe if we, if we do get some time over the festive break, maybe we'll do a little, we'll do some tweets and stuff like that. So you won't, we won't be completely radio silent. Yeah, I mean, because obviously I'll be getting some Switch games over the festive period, we can maybe actually play a game together. That'd be Ooh, awesome. that would be exciting. I'd be off that. Yeah, we just need to decide what game. Because I'd bring, I'm not going to get Smash Bros, I don't think, for Christmas. I, I think the only Switch game I'm getting, actually, is the Sega uh, Mania Plus. Which Sega! I- 
I am actually so excited to play. I honestly cannot wait to play that. I think it's going to be so good. So good on handheld as well. I might be a hero of handheld. You are a hero of handheld. Sorry, I was just adjusting my back. Um, well, Colin, thank you for joining us. <laughs> Eventually. Yeah. Sorry about the delay, but I'm glad I could have some input. That's um, all right. Thanks, thanks for going solo. Sorry everybody. Um, These things happen. It's not your fault. See, when we get our Kickstarter up and running, I'll go fund me and we're actually yeah. paid. Uh, you know, we won't have these problems anymore. We can actually like, quit our day jobs, do podcasting full time, and never leave our studios, oh. our fancy London studios. It's a dream, isn't it? That would be the actual dream. Anyway, um, so yeah, thank you for listening, everybody. Hope you have a fantastic Christmas in 2019. Uh, not 2019, New Year's, is what I meant to say. Um, thank you for joining us in 2018, but we'll be back in 2019 for more of the same, I'm sure. Can't wait. Thank you, Colin. Anything else you'd like to add, Chris? Uh, no, it's all good. Have a good Christmas, <laughs> I think. Have so, ch- challenge me on Smash if you fancy it. Our handheld podcast on Twitter, or Heroes of Handheld, Heroes of Handheld at Gmail I, I take all comers and I pound them into dust. <laughs> Are you actually good at Smash? Uh, ish. It 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 wildly depends on who I'm up against. Yeah. Like. It depends who, you know, like with all things, it's comparative, isn't it? Yeah, I guess so. Cool. Well, I'll look forward to challenging you at some point. Yeah. That would be good. Cool. Anyway, let's uh, end it there, shall we? And move on to the next thing. Peace and love. Peace and love. See you in 2019. War is over. Uh, uh. Bye. Bye.